The government have long argued that it's too expensive and would take too long. Well, now there's some new research from the Australian Conservation Foundation on this very issue. Joining me live is the Foundation's nuclear expert, Dave Sweeney. Dave, thanks so much for your time. What has your research found about the viability of it? Good morning, Laura. Um, the research has shown very clearly that... Uh, the so-called new generation or next generation nuclear technology, small modular reactors and that, in fact, do not exist in the commercial world. They are at a prototype stage. They are not delivering energy for real world use or purposes. And we've looked at cost, we've looked at deployability, we've looked mm. at performance. And it is very, very clear that the way for Australia to advance a low carbon uh, energy future is through uh, a break embracing renewables, not radiation. Yeah, because uh, this small scale nuclear technology might not be viable in a commercial sense yet, but neither is hydrogen. Not, neither are a lot of technologies that are emerging. Would you agree with that? Yeah, look, that, that's true. There's always opportunity for technical change and, uh, and developments, and that's true. But what's also true and what is the key point from ACF and a great deal of people who are concerned to see um, a low-carbon energy future, Laura, is that we need to work with what we have. We need to work with what is proven. Mm -hmm. We don't... Uh, we cannot rely, it's reckless and irresponsible to rely on promises or assertions and to rely on hope. We need to work with evidence, not enthusiasm, when it comes to keeping the lights on, when it comes to hot water and cold drinks. Uh, these things are things that people need and we need to deliver power with certainty and this novel next generation nuclear technology just does not do that. When you look about the reality of the situation as well, uh, Dave, I mean, I look at, at the, the coal-fired uh, plants closing down a lot earlier uh, than scheduled um, and renewables being talked about as filling that gap. That's not quite anchored in reality right at the moment either, is it? Well, the the closure of coal is, and I think one of the most... You're, you're absolutely right, Laura, yeah, that one but of what the most replaces it, I mean. uh, positive... Well, what replaces it is um, energy efficiency and renewables. They're the heavy lift. And renewables are the, is the fastest growing energy sector in Australia and the world. Mm. The AEMO, the Australian Energy Market Operator, and CSIRO have costed and they have consistently found across all scenarios renewables to be the most proven and the cheapest and nuclear to be the most disputed or uncertain and the most expensive. So we have to work with what we've got and that is that we know that renewables work. We know that they're on, for example, a million Australian roofs. We know they have broad social licence. The cost is coming down. The efficiency and the storage capacity is going up. So we're at a time of choice now, Laura, and we need to choose well. I think, again, the key thing here is that the proponents of nuclear technology in Australia are not arguing, none of them are arguing for the nuclear reactors that exist and power in the world today. None of them are arguing about the reactors that are used in the world today. They are putting all their hopes and all our futures on a, re a technology that is unproven and does not exist. And that's not prudent. That's not the basis of a real-world responsible energy policy. Yeah, there's enough countries around the world that, that um, believe that this can be scalable and commercial. I mean... They're not just doing it on some kind of a frolic, are they? They believe that, that it will be developed over the next five to ten years. Is that a pipe dream? That It, it is largely a pipe dream. Our, our research has shown that there have been uh, claims for decades about um, it is just around the corner. Mm. Um, it's a little bit like the people that ring on the doorbell and talk about the date of the apocalypse. It is just around the corner. Those claims have always failed to deliver. And what we've seen is a, a, a trail of broken promises, underperforming projects and cost blowouts. Mm. What we need to see is real-world action for a real-world and pressing problem. And our concern isn't that people discuss nuclear. We're not concerned about that. We're concerned that we waste more time as a nation sure. in addressing the pressing challenges, but also opportunities, Laura that climate change offers. And Australia is so well placed. We've got smart people, good manufacturing, massive, probably the world's best 
mm. suite of renewable resources. It's the fastest growing energy sector in Australia and the world, yeah. and that's the boat we need to be on. Well, sure, but it, I mean, it, it's not reliable because the battery storage technology isn't there either. So there's a lot of uh, these issues that are still pending at the moment. And what does the Conservation Foundation make of the minerals and the mining that is required to upgrade transmission lines so that renewable power can actually go into the grid? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and we're seeing now a boom in what they're called the new energy minerals, lithium and uh, cadmium, nickel, a whole range of, of minerals are now greatly in demand. It, uranium is, is less in demand. People are walking away from that and new energy minerals are greatly in demand. And you're absolutely right. There are profound challenges here, environmental, cultural impact, uh, Indigenous oh. consent, etc., that we need to manage. We need to ensure that we have not just renewables, but ACF uses the term responsible renewals, which oh. is like the whole life cycle from the first shovel in the ground to the maintenance yeah. or the reprocessing or the, or the storage of waste products arising, because everything does have a footprint. But Dave, but also as that well, is sorry, a challenge. sorry to interrupt, because we're just running out of time, but this is something um, that comes up at time and time again, uh, when you're getting lithium out of the ground, when you're getting minerals, I mean, that, that's depleting the earth. Yep. Is there a, a choice here, an uncomfortable truth, that you're mining the earth, depleting the earth in order to save the atmosphere and there's not exactly a perfect balance? Well, you're right, there's no perfect solution. There is always an impact and there is always a footprint. Our job as, as people and our job as ACF, the uh, National Environment Organisation, is to try and minimise that footprint. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the options. We've said the, the smartest, the best, the softest touch, the cheapest, the most deployable is renewable energy. And our position is we really do need right now, Laura, yeah. to supercharge and drive renewable energy. Sure. And also that transition fuel being gas. I mean, I feel like that's been demonised, but it has a 50% less emission th than coal. Do you accept that as a transition fuel? There's no question that gas has a less carbon footprint than coal, but it still has a pretty significant one and it has a very significant impact with other materials too and fugitive emissions with things like methane and the like. There are profound cultural and dislocation impacts as well. So we do not see gas as the way forward. We see that the that probably the best single thing about this whole discussion is that people are seeing that we need to move away from coal. We, we accept that. We've been pushing that for a long time. So then what do we do? How do we meet real-world energy yeah. needs? And we meet them by embracing and supercharging the fastest-growing real-world energy um, alternative and, and power se sector, which is renewables. Okay. So we are really concerned about any distraction from real climate action. We want to see a future that's renewable, not radioactive, Laura. OK, Dave Sweeney, thanks so much for your time. We'll speak soon.